have to. But just get out there now and record something in eight. What's happening, boot junkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. And I've got a conundrum. I've got an audio engineering issue, question, concern, problem that I have not been able to solve. I have been saving my pennies for several years and I bought a new piece of equipment for myself. I have a little thing where I take a couple of dollars, a small percentage out of every job I ever do. And I put it into my Holy Grail fund, Holy Grail fund. And I bought a new piece of equipment and I can't make it work. Can you hear that? Can you hear that hum? If I turn up any loud, it's going to feed back. Classic 60 Hertz. I have, um, I've hired a name that you may, many of you may be familiar with um, to try and help me, to try and help me figure it out and, and to help me get some of the knowledge I need in order to make this work. Uh, George Whittem, which you, who you may know from uh, VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard, uh, does a YouTube channel, which for VoiceOver resource, if knows everything, talks to everybody. If you want to just sort of get in the world of voiceover and, and listen to it and get indoctrinated into the world of voiceover, voiceover body shop. I think they do it every week and it's really, it's just a great resource. And one of them, and so Dan is a, uh, is a voice actor and George is the tech. His website is George, the dot tech. He's the tech. He's an audio engineer. He went to school for this stuff and hopefully this problem is easy. Hopefully he's going to say, just get this thing and it goes and change this and, and do that. So let's meet George. Hey George, how are you? Good. How are you doing today? Doing very well. What's your situation right now? Are you just in your room or your booth? What are you, what are you so, working with? I'm in front of my interface and my new preamp. And I have taken my troubleshooting to, for my preamp as far as I know how. And I'm still, I still have a ground loop hum that mm. I haven't been able to figure out where it's coming from. Yeah. So I thought someone with some actual audio engineering skills might actually know <laughs> what, what I've overlooked, uh, if anything. Well, let me uh, open up a note. Because the way I normally work is once I start a call with somebody... I create a new note for the call. Okay. So I'm going to do that right now. And then uh, I'll keep notes throughout the call. So anything I recommend or whatever, I'll keep track of. So you don't have to. And then right. I'll share that note with you when we're done. And it's just a Google Doc. But when I plug in the preamp, I'm trying to, I don't want to make you suffer through it. So, so the things that I have done is I, I bought a Furman power conditioner. Okay. Trying to put everything that's in the signal path in the conditioner because it was my under, uh, understanding that you try and get everything on the same on the same circuit. They're all plugged into the back of the Furman, but yeah. I still get I still get the the hum. I do have two external displays uh, which are not in the signal path. Should I? Maybe that's something that I should think about. Well. Let's ask, let me ask you this. They're not in the signal path, but I mean, these are displays connected to the iMac? C connected to the iMac. Okay. Yeah. Every single electrical connection, whether it's by a USB cable, a quarter inch patch cable, or a power cord, they're all electronically interconnected. So mm. the, the things that you might least expect, like a monitor, for example, can cause issues. Um, Interesting. And the the power the power supply for the backlight and slightly older monitors, um, before they went to LED backlight, they sometimes could be noisy because the older monitors used um, fluorescent tubes to light up the screen. Well, this screen. is one of my displays. Is an older. It's an old uh, NEC monitor, so ah. it definitely could be that. Is it so bad it's like horrible that you can hardly stand it, or is it just sort of there? It's pretty bad. It's pretty okay. bad. I'll plug it into return to, and I think you'll hear it. Let me plug it in. Okay, yeah, I do hear it. You do mm -hmm. hear it, right? Mm hmm And now it's, and I'll, so I'll unplug it. So that's just the preamp idling, just plugged into the input. Nothing else is plugged into it. Uh, it's the same whether I have a mic in it or not. The other thing I did is I, in the Avalon manual, it says if you're having a hum, 
you pull the there's a gr- a clip in the back called the ground link. Yeah. And it says to remove that, and it will use the ground from the AC, and it didn't make any difference. Maybe the same thing as plugging the power cable into one of those cheaters, you know, where it has a no mm-hmm. ground pin. Oh, no. That's one of my normal ground loop hum troubleshooting steps, is get one of those cheap dollar store, hardware store cheaters for plugging three prongs into the old outlets without a ground and Mm -hmm. start inserting that thing in different places in the studio. In a system where you have a lot of devices, you have to kind of work by process of elimination, and it sounds like you're trying to do that. Mm -hmm. But we still have that, um, those external monitors which are connected to the iMac, and so their grounds are all tied together in some way or or another. Let's see if um, unplugging the NEC monitor, so it's electronically disconnected, and then Plug the Avalon back in and see if it makes any difference at all. I'm going to curl under my desk for it. One second. All right. Well, maybe if it was just that simple. Let's see. All right. So I'm going to plug the Avalon in. No. Uh, I can hear it hum. The second the quarter-inch jack touches, yeah, touches. The, it, like the, the absolute moment there's an electrical yeah. connection made, it starts to make noise. But right. it does sound like it's a problem in the power supply of the unit um, to me. Okay. And of course, that's internal on that unit, something inside. The only solution there may be to have it serviced. The good thing about these old school designed analog pieces of gear is that they're not, for, for the guys that know what they're doing, they're not hard to troubleshoot. Right. I mean, they'll narrow down the component that's making the noise pretty fast. And then that component itself likely isn't that expensive either. The, the sure. thing new is what two grand, twenty two, twenty three hundred, something like yeah, that for a new like one. Something so like obviously you don't want to get close to that expense. Right. Um, but uh, you're in it now, so right. <laughs> <laughs> it might be you know, worth giving Avalon a call. Some shops even have a flat rate, but for a unit that's like built the way that thing is, I imagine it's probably not. It's probably going to depend on what it is. Avalon's a small company. They're just a I think it's probably just a couple of people that work in the in the, on the office there, so chances are you're going to get either one of the owner, you know, the owner, or you know, you're going to probably get the same person every time you call. Right. And you know, they might close for lunch, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> they're they're small, but they they're um, venerable pieces of gear that uh, are I, they're almost legendary in voiceover. Hey, nice right, meeting George. you. And nice chat. It's a pleasure. It's such a pleasure. Thank you so much for your help. My pleasure. Have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye. And so George helped me. He really did help me uh, really identify that my unit was faulty. So the next thing I did just for sort of completing it all is I made a little video and I sent it off to the uh, gentleman who at Avalon, who uh, I reached out to, to, to help me um, identify if it was something that he thought that they would be able to fix. And so I made this little, this little video that was really just for Avalon, but I'll show you just to, to show you what I, what I was experiencing because it'll show it a little bit better. Hey, this is Mike. So thanks for helping me troubleshoot this. And hopefully this helps the people at Avalon right now in my studio, the, uh, sorry, it's dark. The only thing that's plugged in, in the, in the studio right now is a monitor, my interface, and the Avalon, and they're plugged into a Furman power conditioner. It's the only thing that's plugged in in the, in the whole room, except for my battery-operated lantern over there. Um, as you can hear, the Avalon is connected with a, uh, an XLR to tip ring sleeve balanced cable, and this is the hum I get. So I, I hope that helps, uh, and maybe that can help us diagnose what it would take <laughs> what it would take to fix it. I'm really eager to have it fixed, so uh, let's hope that we can that we can make it work. Thanks so much. And so they said, yeah, that was something that they could probably fix, and they offered to uh, to retube it, to fix the light that was out on front, and to just give it a detail because who knows what the provenance of this of this device was. And at the end of it all, they give you a little... Certi- I'm going to redact some information here. Uh, they give you a little certificate at the end, a little certificate at the end that says that they did the, the work and they, um, and they warranty it for uh, some time. And so I got the device back and now you're listening to me over a 
perfectly super clean, like brand new um, Avalon preamp. So I'm really excited. I don't know how to use it yet. Um, I've been trying to you know go through the manual and and learn some of the settings. It's it's a it's you know when you get up into the uh, what my experience is as the the the, the <laughs> The more professional gear that it is, sort of the, the, the steeper the learning curve is. And this one has a, a reasonably steep learning curve. But I'm going to try and do some videos on it and uh, just do some, do some shootouts. I've got some other equipment that I want to compare it against. A anyway, um, the thing I really want to, uh, really want to say is, one, I want to say thank you to, to George. Because without his help, I, I'm not sure what I would have done. I probably would have just kept fighting and fighting and fighting this. I, I really didn't, I didn't know what to do. I had, I'd spent uh, too much money to try and fix it. I recabled this whole studio. I repower stripped it. I consolidated. I probably made the studio better as a whole, but I, I spent a lot of time and I wasted a lot of energy and I should have just gone to George first. He really would have helped me out. So George, thank you so much for helping me. I'm really grateful for it. And for anybody else, if you've got a studio question, a piece of equipment that isn't working right, you'd like to get help with your acoustic treatment, you'd like to, to figure out what's the best way to treat your area, and you want somebody who knows what they're talking about, who actually has real professional experience in this. He set up studios for some really um, prominent voice actors. George... George can help you out. His rates are really reasonable. He's got rates for sure, uh, but uh, he, they're really they're really quite reasonable for the service that you get in return. So thanks, George. And for anybody else, I can't recommend him. Random, whew, I can't recommend him enough. Really, really super helpful. So go out there and fix your home studio if you have to. Call George if you have to. But just get out there now and record something in eight. blew the line. <laughs> oh, well, get out there and record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time.